So uh, we are here with uh, Mike Bernhill from the Professional Imaging Group in Canon. Hello, Mike. Hello. Uh, so today we're going to ask you a lot of questions, but some of them are on the 5D Mark IV that you recently introduced and okay. some more general ones. So uh, let's start with a more general one. Uh, you decided actually not to introduce any new products in Photokina itself, although you did introduce the EOS M5 just before Photokina. Do you think that um, the importance of trade shows like this one is declining in recent years? I um, No, I think trade shows are still quite important. That face-to-face that -face connection with customers is still very important for Canon. Um, it also allows us to, if you people who aren't here would see that our expert bar is full of people. And it's a once in a time you know, opportunity to try every Canon kind of product. Because not every dealer will carry the rare exotic lens like the MP65 or the 800mm. You can actually try every combination. So we still see this as a very good touch point for our customers uh, to come and see. And we get feedback, obviously, from different, different levels. And, you know, it's very interesting the, the things that they're asking us that we don't normally get. And it's kind of still very, very valid kind of event to be here. Okay, so it's basically a face-to-face -face connection with your customers. Yeah, we, you, know, you can't be too distant. You know, we need to be, you know, the customers to speak to them face-to-face. -face. You can't let, um, like, have Chinese whispers. You can't, they can't tell a dealer and the dealer tells us because something is always lost in translation. Okay. And it's very important that they can actually see that we are open and you know, available to answer any questions rather than leaving it to the internet to kind of solve any issues. Okay. Um, basically a follow-up, uh, we have seen that the photo industry as a whole has been in a huge decline possibly since 2012. How did Canon adapt to its uh, basically its strategy to combat this uh, decline in, in the general photography market? Um, we're looking at our internal structures, how we kind of operate, um, restructuring and how we can use different skills. Obviously Canon is a very big organization. We have you know, business to business, photocopiers, as well as cameras. And each division has its own skill set. And up to now, we've been a bit separated. And we haven't really kind of, uh, kind of worked together as a team. And our restructuring and looking at you know, learning from each other can help Canon overall as a business. But Canon's quite a big company. So you know, though the photo market has always traditionally been up and down over many, many years. So we've got other divisions and we are actually looking to develop new technologies in other areas. We're looking at virtual reality, these sort of embryos, sort of augmented realities, 3D printing. So we're not, photo isn't our only just bag. Part, we are part, just part yeah. of our business. So yeah. it's, yeah, photo is down, but we're not too upset. We, we are, we're kind of a broad range of products. Okay, so let's go to the actual products. Mm -hmm. And you have the 5D Mark IV here. And many of our readers were a bit puzzled by the fact that you decided to leave uh, basically in 1080p, uh, slow motion, which is over 60p. Yep. Um, why is that? I mean, is this a technical thing? It's a marketing thing? Um, more technical than okay. uh, a, a, a market decision. You know, we, you know, we developed the product for a particular sort of marketplace. Um, obviously, we're making specialist video products. You know, the industry now for video has morphed so much. And there are very good dedicated video products but where we kind of saw this product is a kind of a hybrid of everything. It's not a photo, it's not a video, it's a bit of both, mainly photo, but there are, just listening to feedback from customers, that the form factor of these cameras is totally wrong for proper video. You know, you, they're not really comfortable to hold for long periods of time, you have to rig them up, therefore the cost goes up, and by the time you've costed it up, you could have brought mm -hmm. a dedicated video mm -hmm. camera, but does the same job, yeah. the better. Um, but we've incorporated the video functions because we see industries like photojournalism um, and sort of uh, other areas where they're doing more and more mixed media. So the video function is still important, but the overcranking and undercranking is not so important to them. But having a, a reliable compact camera, they can shoot, change lenses and then shoot stills and mix between the two, which is much more important for this kind of target audience. Tell me something. is. Uh, is it mostly the processor that needs to be upgraded to be able to shoot, you know, let's say, 120 frames per you've second got, or the buffer? You've got two challenges. One is reading the data out uh, fast enough. Um, you know, the problem is electrons will only travel at a certain speed. You can't make them magically faster. To fix that, you have to put more readouts, which generates more heat mm. uh, and use more battery power. Um, and this is all a big kind of 
circle of compromise. You can add all these features to it, then the camera becomes larger, and larger or battery life drops down. So you've got to find that tipping Balance. point yeah. of uh, where you want to do. So there is no perfect camera on the market. There are lots of products on the market that are very good at certain features, but they don't fit everyone's category. There's no super camera that does everything perfectly. And what we're trying to do is create a best compromise product that fits the largest market we feel is beneficial to us. Some companies have tipped in a different direction and obviously they've made compromises in other areas. So that's what I think is interesting, you said the client, that now there's never been such a broad, broad range of products uh, from different manufacturers. You know, in the past you may see them competing yeah. direct head to head. You know, Market, each product was like yeah. a challenger. Now what we're seeing is a kind of offsetting. So this product may not be perfect for everybody, but in the marketplace, there are more products becoming available, which That's are perfect true. for different customers. That's and true. you're even seeing products that complement each other. Yeah. So you may use this, and then you use another product for something else, different yeah. types of photography. Um, and this is replicates what they do in the film industry. They don't have one camera that does everything. You choose the right tool for the right job, and they coexist. Yeah. Okay. Uh, a question about the EOS M5. Uh, with the introduction, introduction of the EOS M5, you actually uh, left out uh, the 4K, talking about just yeah. what we, we, you mentioned. And uh, do you think that 4K in general is, is not specifically accustomed to the target audience of the yeah, EOS M5? Yeah, 4K is not really a consumer-friendly technology yet. Um, well, well, it sounds fantastic shooting 4K video. Try editing it, yeah. having the right software, having the screen the that displays, the storage, how you get it from here to there, put it on your TV. These are not infrastructure things that exist today. For, for educating, for broadcast, for movies, that kind of stuff, you know, pop videos, 4K is wonderful for the higher end. And they can generate 4K and then sample, deliver full HD for their client. And if the client wants 4K, they can go, oh, I can do a 4K version for a few extra, you know. Yeah. So 4K, the higher end for delivery content exists, but still delivering 4K to your home doesn't exist. If Hollywood can't get you 4K on your TV very easily, for the consumer, it's very difficult. But the 5D Mark II, we experienced this for ourselves for full HD when we introduced it. Most computers couldn't play back full HD, mm. you know. Yeah. And the 4K is coming, yeah. but so we didn't want to overburden customers in that kind. It, it's you know, it's a tick box functionality. It's nice yeah. to have, but in reality, it, it's just not practical today for many many uses. There are obviously people who will use 4K and do it very well, but 90% of customers, it, it, it's, it's just not, too much. Yeah. Maybe in the EOS M6. <laughs> Maybe if, if the systems catch up, you know, new processes and software becomes more commercially available and there is a better way to get content around the house and your Wi-Fi standard, all these infrastructure things that we have no control yeah. over. Need to exist. They yeah. need to exist. Otherwise it becomes a technology that burns out by itself. Yeah, we saw 3D kind of uh, fade out a little bit as well. Okay. Um, back to the EOS uh, 5D Mark IV, hmm? what was your, uh, what would you say was your first uh, number one requested feature for the camera when the Mark III was uh, still around, I mean, was it, the it, Mark IV was I think it depends, a... because the 5 series is, fits so many different pro different types of photography and videography. I think it's, uh, you know, if you talk to different ones, you would say different yeah. things. But things like the Wi-Fi is kind of a, quite an important one. People always want larger AF areas. These are, you know, things that are always going on. A few more megapixels, you know, uh, Again, 4K video from the video guy. So really, you talk to these guys and talk to some video guys, oh, I don't need big old AF points, or you talk to a documentary photographer, says, I don't need 4K. So it, yeah, there's it not- It depends on who you were asking. Here you are, and then you know, we talk probably to our percentage points about if whether one is more than another. Yeah. It depends on which market you talk to. Okay, and if after your release of the camera, basically what I wanted to ask is, what is, would you say the most important feature that people are not aware of with a 5D Mark IV? Maybe I think, features? Well, again, it depends on the market yeah. as well, the type of users. So for many users, the, although it has built-in Wi-Fi, what we don't mention so much is that it supports FTP. Okay. So many... So you can di directly send an image or I don't know, video directly to a server? Yeah. And again, okay. most cameras don't have, they yeah, have to your phone. Right. 
but professional uses sending that FTP. So this has FTP for the first time in the camera. So you can be sending, as you said, direct press set or auto transmit images straight to a server. So uh, we were at Visa Poulomage, a big photogenist uh, event that we sponsor in the south of France, and I was speaking to one of our photographers, and he's doing a fantastic story about ivory, you know, okay. and uh, the hunting of elephants. And the follow-up is what happens and why this market exists, and going to places like China where they carve it and the whole behind the scenes. They don't want him to be there, you yeah. know, but he wants to photograph it. But what happens if he gets caught? Yeah, he, need, he needs a backup of the image right away. And exactly, with FTP, he can connect his iPhone or his MiFi device, and the images can be transmitting off as he's shooting. But it's for, it's RAW or it's JPEG? It's what up to you. You can choose, you can send JPEG, RAW, it depends the, on your it, The connection speed is fast Connection for speed, RAW? if you're working in certain uh, areas, you know, like sports guys use FTP, they will send the JPEGs mm -hmm. or news guys, so it hits the magazine. Uh, newspaper, etc., and they've got the raw files for later on, like your digital negative. Yeah. So you've got the instant hit, so it goes in the paper for tomorrow, and then if the archival, you have the raw file. Paper. So there are different criteria, and you can choose that in the camera whether you send big JPEGs, small JPEGs, raws, etc. That is up to you. But he can transmit images to the cloud. Yeah. Uh, basically, if someone puts a gun in his face and says, Give me the camera. He hands over his camera, but his story's safe. And that's the most important thing to him. The camera's a tool. If he has to hand over a tool, it's an expensive tool, but he, yeah, it's better than yeah, being shot. But he's still got his story, which is the most important thing. He can carry on, he can get another camera. And, and there is another point for this, I think, for uh, photojournalists especially, uh, if you need to have your image very, very quickly at the hands of your editors, you can shoot an image yeah. and they can have it almost immediately. Again, this is one of the, you know, talking to some of the news guys, one of the biggest challenges today is that what they were facing, yeah, the people they were competing with, is smartphone these. people, yeah. Because, you know, uh, for news, it's more about instantaneously, how so you get quality of quality. The necessarily. It's secondary for many stories. Yeah. It's the first, first image in, yeah. can, you know, dominate the story. So being able to send directly from the camera quickly is so important because it basically pays their bills, you know. So yeah. competing rather than competing with this, they're now on a level terms. Rather have to find Wi-Fi and connect in and edit the image, download it and send it off. Now it's like a press of a button. And things like IPC data, you can input all their metadata in, so their name, their copyrights, all this stuff. So it's already tagged. It's ready to go. And then if you've got two choices between 30 megapixel wonderful image and this, the editor will go for this. Yeah, obviously. But if there's a three hour difference, this will win. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, it's 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 a nice feature and I'm I didn't know that it exists actually. Yeah, again, I think we obviously we're limited by the number of spec points we have. Of course. And yeah, you know, there's so many little technology things that we've changed in this camera. I, I kinda love you know, the weather proofing, the touch screen. Uh, the fact that the screen now can basically is not polarized, so if you're wearing your sunglasses, oh, really? so when you do that, it, all the screens used to go black, which was horrible. Uh, <laughs> now you can shoot vertically. You know, which is the first time I tried it. First time I tried it, but amazing. <laughs> you know, little thing like that, what customers have been asking yeah. for over the years. You know, they, we have this little button over here, which has been added, which can be customized. Oh, okay. And one of my favorite functions is to set to ISO. Mm. You think, well, oh, okay. But when you use the battery grip, you have the same toggle. Oh. So if you want to change ISO, you can change it either way. So the operation is both the same vertically yeah. and horizontal. You don't have to reach around to press the button, which is kind of, yeah, yeah. And intuitive. You can just quickly go from ISO. So it's that little kind of operation. You don't need to think about how you're using the camera. It becomes instinctive. Yeah. And you worry about what you're seeing at the other end of the lens. At the end of the day, functionality is sometimes more important than the actual totally. you know, image quality of the camera. If you don't get the image because you stumbled with the camera... You have to think about these cameras. And the joys of the Canon system is that they're all the controls are the same. You know, they're very similar. If you have a 5D3, you pick this up, you don't need the manual. You can just go straight off and everything is roughly where it is. You know understand the camera. If you're shooting in a studio and you need to do a high resolution for a big commercial, 5D mark, 5DS, 5S, yeah. it's exactly the same. You don't have to start to think. We recently had a photographer switch from another brand, but they, he was an, one of their ambassadors, but he had to use two different types of camera systems for a commercial and his day job. And the operating system was totally different. different. So he had to pretend to be thinking about what he was taking photographs, look artsy and crafty. He was actually trying to figure out where the what, what each button did on the camera because it was so different from his day camera. Yeah. 
So he moved to a 5 Series, now he's got like a 5 DSR and a 5 D3 then. So he could easily kind of, all he had to do is look at the logo on the front and that was, then he knew what everything else. He didn't need to remember what that button did or how I changed the ISO. Okay, so final question, um, again, more general one. If you look at the market right now, would you say that uh, after all we have said, you know, that do uh, you think that the traditional camera-based photography uh, is something that is mostly for professional enthusiasts and uh, maybe the consumer uh, side is subsiding because of the changes in the market? Well, I think the interesting statistic on the side of that is that there are more photographs being taken today than ever before. So everyone has more passion for photography than ever before. And it's just the type of devices that they've traditionally used. Yeah. You know, and we've seen people move through different types of cameras over the years, and you know, all the way through the history of photography, people have changed. Type of products that have come out, and now we have the phones, which makes it very easy. But it also brings people into photography. They have a, a passion. They can start to learn about photography easier. In the past, you'd have to get a traditional mechanical camera and learn what each dial did and uh, now you've got apps that kind of took so you you're more fully formed when you want to step up because you know the difference between these these are getting better but they'll never compete with these because these will move equally along the, the, the line of every time this gets better this will get better too so and that both products coexist yeah but you know as I say we've seen photography dip and then come back up again and it, and it's uh, it's cycle of life, but um, but yeah, I, I, we don't see. We're moving into other areas of photography as well. We're looking at printing, how you interact, virtual services, reality. virtual reality. You know, using uh, like Life Cake and our uh, Iristo. Well, kind of not just looking at cameras. We're looking at the broader spectrum of things as well. So we know it's not always going to be at these cameras. Uh, people are going to change into different types of photography, and we need to be there for all the levels, from input to output. Okay, thank you very much, Mike. Thank you very much.